Senator Risch, thank you for joining us uh, here thank on you. Top Line. Really appreciate it. W one of the big questions right now is the question of the photo of bin Laden's body or the photos. Do you think those photos should be released? Well, not at this moment, no. Uh, eventually, these photos are going to be released. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, the decision as to whether or not to release them is complex, but it's going to be tied to a number of things, such as what reaction is the release of those photos going to get? Number one, what are you going to get out of it? Number two, what's the reaction going to be? You've got to weigh those two. Right now, I think most people are surprised at the lack of reaction in a lot of parts of the world to what's happened. I'm not so sure you want to uh, poke the beehive uh, by releasing these photos at this time. Eventually, I think the photos will come out. And those who don't believe, you don't think they're really going to be convinced by a photograph, do you? A photograph isn't going to make any difference. It's going to, you know, DNA is, has now been confirmed to be 100% positive that it was bin Laden. Uh, th that's, what's going to, uh, that's what's going to convince people. Having said that, photos, DNA, whatever you have, you know, there's people who still believe we, don't walk, we didn't walk on the moon, and there's going to be people who believe that uh, he wasn't killed. Yeah, no matter what. I, I just, just want to clarify this point. What, you say that you think they'll be released eventually, or they'll come out eventually. Do you think they'll be leaked, or do you think that there'll be a pro, an appropriate time to release photographs like these? You know, I can't uh, predict that. Uh, just having been in this business as long as I have, I can tell you that my judgment is one way or another, you guys are going to get to see the photos. <laughs> so, so, you know, the, the big question here is Pakistan. I mean, the, the, this, this was right in the, next to their military academy. Uh, this is in a city of 500,000 with, with, you know, military facilities all around it. Do you really believe they didn't know what was going on here? I guess, the, I guess the way I weigh that is this. <clears throat> Almost all of us live in some kind of a neighborhood. And if there was a facility that was constructed in your neighborhood like this, that had people who came and went like this, wouldn't it be a matter of uh, speculation in the neighborhood as to what was actually going on in there? So I, I, probably in the neighborhood, uh, there were people who had deep suspicions about what was happening in there. You know, the, the thing about Pakistan is it's complicated. And everyone who's a student of our foreign relations today, uh, national security today needs to study Pakistan uh, and its uh, position on the world stage. Uh, we have to deal with them for reasons that are too obvious to talk about. Um, whether it's a, a good relationship every minute of every day, I think everyone would agree that it, it certainly could be better. Uh, you think, though, that the Pakistanis are providing help in the war on terror, that you, you consider them allies in the fight against terror, despite the complicated relationship that you reference? Right. In answer to both those questions, I would say yes. They are providing uh, a degree of help, and secondly, they, they are an ally. Uh, they have their own individual interest, and I think we always lose sight of that, that uh, uh, people around the world don't always act in the interests of the United States. They act in their own interests. And uh, obviously, the political situation there is uh, uh, probably as uh, complex as it is here in the United States. Uh, they look at what happens over here and believe that it's complex. We look at what happens over there, and it's complex. The people who are, are in the government over there have to answer to uh, a lot of different segments uh, of the population there. So as a result of that, they don't always do things exactly the way we want them done. Okay, you're about to run to another briefing on this, and you've been you've been getting briefed, you know, <laughs> for the last couple of days almost nonstop. What are you finding most fascinating and most surprising? What are you learning in these latest briefings? Well, uh, it, it isn't surprising, I guess, but uh, I'm, I'm awfully proud of the way that uh, that this was planned. I'm awfully proud of the way that this was executed. Uh, the working together of the uh, intelligence community uh, and the military. And obviously, uh, it hasn't come out yet, but there'll be more of it coming out that uh, there wasn't just one military, one branch of the military involved in this. Uh, every branch of the military was It wasn't was just Navy in SEALs, in other words. Every branch of the military was involved in this. There'll be more of that coming out uh, in, uh, in, in days to come. And just very quickly, one last thing. Uh, a lot of question about the enhanced interrogation techniques. Do you believe that they were critical here, uh, going back to Faraj al-Libi, 
and uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, that, that, that really was those CIA interrogation techniques that started this ball rolling or, or not? Well, that's what's been said, is that, uh, that, that the initial thread that they started to pull on came from uh, enhanced interrogation. From that, you can take it to a debate on wh where you go with that. But, but I don't think there's any doubt that it was enhanced interrogation that gave them the initial thread. It's been widely reported that that gave them the nickname, if you would, of uh, an individual that proved to be absolutely critical in bringing the whole house of cards down. All right, Senator Rich, thank, thank you for joining us on Top Line. I know you run to your next briefing. Right, thank thank you. you.